Hello, this is Kay from KCM, and here today I am doing my Sunday espresso video on a Monday. And not just any Monday, the Monday of my hair being crazy, my peach fuzz being more peach fuzzy than normal, and Memorial Day itself. And so cheers to all those out there during Memorial Day who have made their sacrifices um, to protect our freedoms, not just in America, but all over the world, because there are many people, but especially those who have, have dedicated their lives to supporting our safety and freedoms. Today, Espresso Sunday, Monday, Monday, Sunday, we are talking about one specific topic, and that is French roast. And that's because French roast is something that I didn't know anything about. And yes, if you're looking at me and saying, Kay, your shoulders are looking a little burnt. You're right. French roast. Here is Higher Grounds. We've done a video where we did their, their coffee beans before. I don't have anything especially profound to say about them, except I live in Kalamazoo and they are a... a available um brand here in Kalamazoo so uh that's not to criticize them either because a few of the beans that I've tried to, from them I've rather enjoyed anyway I wanted to talk about this video especially re related to French roast because I thought it was interesting I tried French roast and um I rather enjoyed it but I learned some things about French roast in this especially dark roast style that I thought people would be interested in learning about. So I have my cup of espresso. It's way too late for me to be drinking espresso, and I'm going to be drinking espresso. Let me tell you a few facts that I've learned. So <clears throat> first and foremost, um, a lot of times, so French roast describes the roast itself it does not ex describe the bean or any of the origin of where the bean comes from so quality wise you can uh, here's what i found you know and i'm always going to take this back to whiskey and whiskey tastings because i drink whiskey but when you talk about blends a lot of times it's very similar when you talk to blend about blended scotch you're missing some element of traceability this is, um, wor it's worthless when it comes to traceability. We don't know which beans we're talking about. We don't know where they came from. We know about the roast, and we know the roast is dark as can be. Now, here is the facts that you might be interested in when you talk about roasts. French roast is very, very dark. Flavors are described as earthy, chocolatey, smoky, those types of, of descriptors. Those things sound like something that a, a scotch drinker would enjoy. And guess what? This French roast, especially, I do enjoy. But there's a couple things you have to recognize when you talk about things like this. And it's no different than a peated scotch in some regard. For starters, if you want to experience what a coffee bean has to offer, if you roast it especially heavily, I think, and again, I'm not experienced in this, but I think something that we can observe is that a deep, dark, heavy roast will impede on the complexities the bean itself has to offer. The same with overpeating uh, malt whiskey. If the spirit, if the distillate has a lot to offer and you peak the the devil out of it, you might not be experiencing much of the spirit anymore. You could also, if you want to go away from the smoky analogy, you could talk about it in terms of oak casks. When you take virgin oak casks and you apply them to scotch whiskey, the distillate in scotch is a little more delicate than what you would find in terms of like a bourbon. So while bourbon is you is 
a 100% um, virginal cask. Scotch doesn't do as well in, 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 in new white elk casks. So and what I mean by that is, is you lose some of the balance. You lose some of the flavor content because the, the oak just dominates what you're doing. Um, so one way or another, let's take that back to the French roast. French roast is considered one of the heaviest roasts. And, and the French roast term comes from how dark the actual roast color is. So that's about as dark as... So there are Italian roasts, which are very, very dark. And then, excuse me, it's late. That's why I have an espresso and I'm drinking it. And I shouldn't be drinking it, but I'm going to drink it anyway. Um, you have these roasts, which are very, very dark. Uh, French and Italian roasts are considered very dark. Which one's darker? Kind of irrelevant. Um... But when you have that dark roast, you also, you actually, so you might have noticed if you've ever been to a grocery store that has like coffee bean dispensers or whatever, whatever you might notice that some of that stuff's really dirty and really oily and stuff. The darker roasts tend to be a little more oily. That comes to another fact that I wanted to talk about, which I thought was really interesting. The oilier stuff, this, the darker roast that, that generate those more oils at the surface of the coffee bean, those tend to, what was the word that was used was rancid. They tend to go rancid more, more, more quickly. And I'm not sure if I like that terminology. Stale, I think, might be a better term, but, um, but I think there's some truth to that. And some numbers I got was if you're not prepared to consume between one to two weeks with your French roast, then maybe you need to go for a lighter um, roast, which is interesting. So they talk about proportion. They say maybe you need to buy less to get that optimum, optimum flavor. And then they say, you know, that's for the whole bean, okay? Then when you go to the um, to the to the ground, like when you grind it, then you're talking 30 minutes, 30 minutes where you're getting that optimum flavor. Um, and I know that people are saying, well, is it really that much of a difference? That seems a little ridiculous. I want to do a video on that specifically. And I did buy a big bag of Costco brand coffee bean and I want to grind stuff on daily increments and then and then not quite hourly increments but I want to do a video kind of studying that particularly anyway this is higher grounds from Traverse City check my facts Traverse City it's from Traverse City Michigan and they have a French roast brand, or uh, um, roast. I don't know, I would call it a bottling if it was scotch. What would you call it? Variant? French roast variant of their coffee. Um, something that Higher Grounds could do a better job of is disclosing to us where those beans are from, what type of beans they are, what type of blends they are. Those would be helpful details to us. It's no different than Scotch whiskey or anything else. The more detail, the better off we are. If we don't need that detail, if we don't use that detail, it doesn't do any harm to anybody. But if we want that detail, it helps us. As consumers, we like that. I will tell you, I am becoming more aware as I drink espressos I'm becoming more aware of the complexities of that coffee bean the last video I did I talked about you know um, how how comparators are really profound when it comes to uh, formulating an opinion and having a, an awareness of what's out there um, Another fun fact, some of the darker roasts can actually be lower caffeine levels. 
the whys of it, I'm, I'm still trying to figure out, but, um, I'll talk about that more in another video. Uh, the fun thing about trying scotch in a lot of capacities is that you get the opportunity to taste, you get the opportunity to experience something different. Um, espresso, although it, it doesn't cover the holistic broadband, it's probably a, a 5% of, of the population who actually drink espressos, especially at their home. And especially people, I mean, you might even be talking less than 5% when you talk about um, people who actually make espressos from grounds and have like a porta filter and the whole thing. Highly recommend it though. It, I think it's a, you know, I I know you get those K-cups and the, whatever, the Jure eggs. I have had people who are not passionate about this stuff come over, try our espressos at our house from our uh, Mr. Coffee espresso maker and go, wow, what a, what a difference, you know, I really, and I've had, I've convinced people to go and buy them, just not in my own sales pitch, because obviously I don't get anything out of it, but um, because they've tried the difference and gone this is that much better and that and we don't do particularly well when we come to grounds i've just started to kind of like i used to kind of grind a, a week's worth or three or four days worth of espresso grinds and then use them now i'm trying to make it so that it's more like a day's worth so that i can grind and then i'm using all of that grind in one day um I haven't done the comparison, but it is interesting. This might be my favorite so far of all of the, the, the grinds I've tried, of all the blends I've tried. I'm not sure it's because of the quality. I think the flavors, those earthy flavors, those minerally flavors, those do resonate well with me. I do like peaty scotch. I do like some of that uh, stuff. When you look at it, it says smoke, pungent, lingering. Those are the descriptors i guess that they put on there and uh, it's a very dark roast it is a very dark roast it does have smoke it does it is a little pungent it does linger so they they hit the mark on that now that said i am uh we we might be two weeks on this bag and um i'm thinking to myself maybe maybe it is kind of getting past his prime but it it is reasonably complex here is the balancing act when you talk about complexity because i think on one side we're talking about the complexity of the roast versus the complexity of the um bean itself but there's still a decent amount of acidity there's still a decent amount of um complexity that i think the bean is probably contributing to Here's the thing. I have not tried a lot of espresso in my time. I haven't tried a lot of variety. I read a few articles prior to doing this video to talk about this roast specifically because it was something different. I want to do single origin beans and I want to do certain roast profiles and I want to try some different stuff and share them with you. But I do want to be very clear that there is some polarizing opinions as far as French roast goes. One of the big things is people say if you're not going to consume it very quickly or you can't consume all of it in a short amount of time, don't do French roast because it's very dark and it will lose its emphasis very quickly. And I want, I want us to think about this really hard because there is something to be said for that criticism. I think it's a, a valid one. However, the deep, rich, chocolatey flavor, the pungent flavor, some of that mineral, some of that earthiness, some of that smokiness, if you like those characteristics, even if you lose some of it, you're still not going to find, I don't think, well, let me back up. I have not yet found a 
medium roast that's offering what dark roast offers. This French roast, at least from higher grounds, and I don't, this is the first French roast I've done. So I'm not sure if it's really a good barometer for French roast as a whole. It probably isn't. Everybody could do it different. But it does offer some unique characteristics for me that other roasts haven't done yet. So really an interesting thing. And if you haven't watched my last video, or if I haven't put it up yet, which I will, um, I talk about the Ethiopian Yerga Chef and talk about what that roast is like. But not only that, not the roast, but what the bean is like, the coffee is like. Not only do I talk about that, I also talk about the the journey in learning about this stuff. So when you watch that video, you'll you'll understand very deeply um, what it means to kind of experience this stuff and learn about it. I haven't done a lot of coffee. I haven't done a lot of coffee reviews and coffee detailing. Um, and I'm expressly doing espresso. I'm not doing French press. I'm not doing uh, drip. I'm not doing anything else. I'm just doing espressos. And I have to say, um, two weeks down the line, and I've had this several times, I thoroughly enjoy it. And, you know, um, this might just be word association, but it reminds me a little bit of French toast. It has... It has the earthiness, but it also has a little, like, if you took that, like, little bit of cinnamon, nutmeg, spicy kind of character, and then you added a little bit of that maple syrup sweetness. Not bad. I do always add my little, this much, this little spoony spoon. I add this much sugar, do every special espresso. It's a double shot. Oh, Jesus Christ. There you go. Spilling it on myself. Uh, I think that should be a good end of the video. You spill on yourself, you ruin your pants, and you've detailed people on your mid-evening uh, espresso. So now that I have kept my calm long enough I was trying to show my you can't do it you just spill this is a great video <laughs> this is just fantastic if you like this if you like seeing me spill liquid all over the place subscribe comment like do all the things that you do on YouTube cheers